on Sunday, the 9th of September, 1739, as many as 80 South Carolina slaves armed with stolen weapons revolted and killed 23 white men, women, and children. The Stono Rebellion is a turning point in American history. It resulted in stricter slave laws that reshaped American slavery and the future of the African American people. In the late 17th century, Carolina planters were searching for a staple crop like sugar and tobacco. They found rice, which was a staple in West Africa. Within a few years, Carolina was a colony of rice planters who were importing thousands of slaves from the Caribbean and West Africa. In 1719, the King of England took over Carolina and made it a royal colony. He then split the colony in two, South Carolina to produce rice, and North Carolina, which is mostly dominated by tobacco plantations. Plantation owners in South and North Carolina needed an ample supply of cheap labor to produce the cash crop, rice. So they imported African slaves. Soon the proportion of slaves in the Carolina Low Country grew to 80% of the population. South Carolina became a slave society. Planters chose to live in town and leave overseers in charge of their fields and slaves. Planters in South Carolina also put less time and money toward keeping slaves healthy. And they depended on importations from Africa rather than on natural increase to get new slaves. On September 9th, 1739, 50 enslaved Africans were led in an uprising by a slave named Cato, sometimes referred to as Jemmy. The uprising may have been a response to the promise of freedom in Spanish Florida. Since the late 17th century, Spanish Florida had unofficially been offering refuge to escaped slaves. When the English established the border colony of Georgia in 1733, the Spanish crown made it known once again that runaways would find freedom in Spanish Florida in return for Catholic conversion and a term of four years in service to the crown. This offer may have had a greater incentive for the rebels because many historians believe they were from the Congo, which had heavy Catholic influence. Some of the rebels might have also been in the Congolese military before they were enslaved, and they used military tactics that they learned in the Congo. The leader, Cato, was a literate slave who led about 20 other enslaved Africans from the Stono River. The slaves marched down a road with a sign that read, Liberty. The rebels then went into many different houses and killed the residents. George Cato, direct descendant of Cato, who was interviewed by the Federal Writers Project in the 1930s, describes the event. They work fast, covering 15 miles, passing many fine plantations, and in every single case, stop and break in the house and kill men, women, and children. They burned seven plantations and killed 20 to 25 whites. On the way, they also gathered more recruits for a total of 80. South Carolinian Lieutenant Governor William Bull and four friends came across the group on horseback. They left to warn other slaveholders about the rebels. I met these rebels at 11 o'clock in the forenoon so that I fortunately discerned the danger time enough to avoid and give notice to the militia. Lieutenant Governor William Bull in a letter to the Royal Council. The next day, he rallied a militia of planters and slaveholders, a group of as many as 100 heavily armed men 
traveled to confront the rebels. The group caught up with the slaves at the Edison River. In the battle, 20 whites and 44 slaves were killed. Bull then hired other slaves, as well as Chickasaw and Catawba Indians, to capture the rebel slaves who had escaped the battle. The group of slaves that escaped fought a battle with the militia a week later, about 30 miles from the site of the first conflict. Most of the surviving rebels were executed, but others were sold into the slave markets of the West Indies. For the next two years after the Stoner Rebellion, slave uprisings continued independently in Georgia and South Carolina. Colonists believed slaves had been inspired by the Stoner Rebellion. Planters decided that they had to develop a slave population that was native-born, believing slaves would be more content if they were born into slavery. They also needed more control over their slaves. They passed the Negro Acts of 1740. This prevented slaves from growing their own food, assembling in groups, earning their own money, and learning to read. Some of these restrictions were already put in place, but now they were going to be strictly enforced. The Acts also enacted a 10-year moratorium against importing slaves from Africa. The legislature also worked to improve conditions and slavery. They established penalties for masters who demanded excessive work or who brutally punished slaves. This was difficult to enforce though because the law did not allow slave testimony against whites. The Stoner Rebellion was a turning point in American history. If the Stoner Rebellion were actually a victory for the black majority in South Carolina, the end of slavery could have possibly happened sooner. Unfortunately, the rebellion failed, and the slave owners retaliated with the Negro Acts. This led to greater repression of, and less autonomy for, the slaves in South Carolina and around the South in the generation before the Revolution. According to Peter H. Wood, by the time Europeans in America were prepared to throw off the yoke of slavery under which they felt themselves laboring as the subjects of the English king, the enslaved Negroes in South Carolina were in no position to take advantage of the libertarian rhetoric. This is one reason slavery did not end until 1865. It was also a turning point in American culture. After the Stono Rebellion, the Negro Acts discouraged the importation of slaves from Africa. The next generation of slaves were mostly native-born. Gradually, this population of native-born slaves and their descendants began to make America their home. They became the African-American people who created the African-American culture. Even though many would look at the slave rebellion as a failure that resulted in harsher rules to control slaves in the South, Many still believed the rebels were brave, courageous people to sacrifice their lives in order to stand up against slavery in the South. As a descendant of Cato said almost 200 years later, he die, but he die for doing the right as he see it. And before I be a slave.